Hey everybody, I'm Kabrin Reckland. Thank you for joining me on my Premiere LaserBrain tutorial. Today we're going to build a spaceship navigation console to be used for the interior of a cockpit in one of my sci-fi projects. Now, as you can clearly see, <laughs> this is a baby toy. Okay, well that's enough of that. I'm not going to torture you anymore. But anyhow, I was super excited when I walked into a Goodwill and picked this up for only two bucks. So it's perfect. It's perfect for my needs. Um, so anyhow, just wanted to show you guys. I, I do apologize. I didn't document the beginning process of my removing the emblems from the individual buttons. Um, but I will tell you what I did do to remove them. The the, the images that were on the buttons were very difficult to remove. I mean, damn near impossible. I've never had that had to go through that much of a struggle to remove like uh, um, sublimated or heat transfer images like that before. Like, I, I mean, usually it's fairly easy to remove those images from plastic. But uh, the manufacturer that made this, they used a very sophisticated method to embed them into the buttons. So I was forced to use, well, I used the... Uh, what manicure pedicure file that you find in the ladies department at the dollar store and I used that or I used a couple of those to sand off the emblems so now they're gone thank Jesus they're gone so now all I have to do is paint it and detail it and in theory we should be done we'll see now this is where it gets to be a little tricky is dealing with the interior electronics of this toy. And you're gonna run into this with any electronic toy that you modify or take apart. Uh, I just wanted to show you what I'm doing. I went ahead and clipped the wires and went to the speaker to get rid of that annoying, or the annoying sound effects that come up every time you press the buttons because we don't need it to say, hello friends, come play with me. You know, we don't need that when we're uh, filming the scene, so. Uh, went ahead and disabled that and on the interior there's a cover for the little like uh, ball like control in the front and uh, so I had to take it off so that I can remove the ball and at least paint it silver or something or maybe replace it with something else I haven't quite decided yet but uh, just wanted to show you everything you might encounter when you're having to deal with this. I mean, you know, as long as you have a reasonable knowledge of, of mechanics or electronics and the way they work, it shouldn't be too difficult um, to modify or, or adjust to your needs. So this is the cover for the buttons on the interior where the, all the electronics are, uh, are put together. I'm sorry, I'm not like a electronics expert or whatever. But uh, you get the idea. This is this is the circuit board. Thank you. This is the circuit board <laughs> that uh, contains all the programming and everything for the, uh, the the sequencing of the lights and the uh, the sounds. Look at that. Copyright detail. Oh, I'm gonna cover that up. You didn't see that. I ran into something that might present a bit of an issue. I'm not exactly sure, but as I was removing the buttons from this assembly. I noticed that each button has like tabs. I don't know if you could see them, it's tiny little tabs there. They appear to correspond with the positioning of the buttons on the circuit board. So that tells me I may not be able to rearrange the colors of the buttons that I had, like I had originally planned. Because what I wanted to do was like put two purple ones together, three green ones together, you know, you get the idea, to kind of make it look more like, like sequencing lights on a control panel. Now I know I may be overthinking this, but that's kind of the way my brain works. Uh, just wanted to show you that this is definitely one little obstacle I might have to overcome. Now whenever I'm doing builds that involve sophisticated electronics and different assemblies, I like to put them in individual Ziploc bags accordingly. 
you know, I put all the different parts together uh, where they belong. So it's like all of the electronics assembly parts go into one baggie with the uh, accompanying screws. That way I don't get them mixed up with other pieces. So I separate them during my builds. That way when I'm done sanding and painting the covers, when I go, when, when everything's dry and then I go back to reassemble everything, I will know exactly where all the parts are and where everything goes just by simply looking at all the photos that I took before the build any kind of video references or you know in some cases if you're lucky enough to find some of these toys in their original boxes you can also use those reference photos on or or, or the instructions on how to put things back together all right so I've masked off all of the important areas of the casing I covered the electronics interior or I should say the housing for the batteries that way it doesn't get covered in paint and the backside it really doesn't matter too much I mean I you know can paint it for the most part but it doesn't have to be as perfect as the top half because this is what's going to be in frame on camera so the bottom half doesn't really need to have all that much finesse the next step in the process that I like to use is acetone or nail polish remover. Uh, can easily be found at dollar store, Walmart, what have you. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, but I just wanted to show you one method in particular that I use. Now, this may be unorthodox, okay? I, I don't know for sure. I, I couldn't tell you. This is, this is one particular method that I was taught. Uh, many years ago and it works perfectly for me. I can't tell you for sure whether or not this is the professional method way to do it. Um, but hey, it's a method that works for me and the paint sticks like crazy after you treat surfaces uh, with it, especially these kinds of plastics. Um, typically, you have to sand these plastics or these housings before you paint them. That way the, the paint adheres really well. The only problem I have with that is, you know, press for time, number one. I've got a lot of stuff to build since I'm doing it all by myself. And two, try sanding all those intricate areas without spe using special attachments or equipment. Um, it, it, it's not that, that easy to pull off. So this is just one method in particular that I like to use. I just take a sponge brush and then I fill a little wax paper cup with it. Now this is, this is important. Because you don't want to use like a plastic cup or what have you to put acetone into because you don't know what type of plastic it's made of and it, it could very easily dissolve the uh, cup itself and then you just make a mess everywhere. You also want to be prepared and have some paper towels handy ready to go in case you need to wipe stuff off or you know, do, do a quick brush off or, or, or blot certain areas that, where you may have spilled acetone on them. If you notice I have that little ball part sitting on top of a cup so that way when I'm ready to brush it real quick I can easily set it on top of the cup to dry Oop, well not like that but you know what I mean if you haven't already noticed I'm using a flat unopened priority mailbox to protect the sur my working surface that way I don't spill acetone or make a mess everywhere I went ahead and poured a little bit of the mild nail polish remover it's for strengthening with gelatin for natural nails now this acetone isn't as strong and i like to use this because it also gives me time like like more working time for prepping the surface as opposed to stronger acetones that do not have any additives these things man these uh types of solvents these will like eat through plastic very quickly if i were to use this 100 percent acetone uh, yeah, it'll definitely prep the surface, but sometimes it's, it's a bit overkill. So I like to ease myself in by using the, the, I guess you could say the more mild polish, nail polish removers or acetones before using the 100% strength. Uh, that way uh, I have better control of the, the uh, brushing and the uh, prepping of the surface. So let's go ahead and dip that brush in real quick. Now you want to just do it fast. You don't want to, you know, spend too much time in certain areas because that'll get you into trouble really quick. 
I had to do the brushing off camera because I had to move fast. But as you can see, I just brushed it very lightly and very fast with the mild strength acetone. That way I could just let it sit and dry and really just seep into that plastic and prep the surface the way I need it to be. Then you just repeat the same process for the back half. Again, back half isn't as important as the front half, but I mean, better safe than sorry, right? Don't want to, don't want anybody to see any uh, vibrant green parts on your uh, movie props, that's for sure. I just wanted to add that it's perfectly okay to dump the unused acetone back into its container because you're not going to be using it on your nails, you're just going to be using it for your projects, okay? So just remember, you can reuse acetone, just don't use it for your nails after that. This is strictly for your projects, your builds, for prepping your services, and nothing more. Also, please wear protective gear. I do realize I'm doing this barehanded. I just forgot to put my gloves back on for this video. If you'll notice, the surface of this toy has now been dulled by the acetone. This is exactly what we want. We want the surface to have more bite, what's called bite, so that the paint can hold on to it. That way, whenever the props are handled or mishandled, you know, sometimes they don't scratch very easily and reveal the, the actual color beneath the paint. So that is why you always want to use a solvent to prep the surface. Or, you know, if you, know, if you definitely have the time or the inclination, you can sand it. I mean, sanding is always a better method. I'm not saying that my methods are better. I'm just showing you what I like to do to zip through my projects. Here's what happens when you use 100% acetone nail polish remover to prep your surfaces. I want to show you the difference. Now, when you use stronger acetone, I do apologize, I'm like I'm trying to do everything with one hand here. I don't have a cameraman. So when you prep the surface 100% acetone, when you're brushing, I mean, you, you can't really see it on camera, but you can definitely feel it as you're brushing the surface. It starts to mar the surface as you're brushing. Like it, like you'll literally see streaks as you're brushing and the brush will sort of like dig into the plastic, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on, on the kind of surface that you want. But since I'm just trying to prep the surface for plastic, I really, can't use all of that uh, marring of the surface, you know, so uh, definitely want to be careful. I mean, if you're going to use 100% acetone, it is definitely a, a better method, in my opinion. I, I prefer to use 100% acetone, but for demonstration purposes, I, I just wanted to show you the difference why, you know, the difference between using a milder nail polish remover versus 100% acetone. 100% acetone eats into the surface. I mean, it will mar the plastic as you're brushing if you're not too careful. You know, if you don't do quick, quick um, swipes or, or, or brushing, you will definitely start to see a, a texture in the surface versus when you use um, lighter nail polish remover or acetone in this case, um, it, it, it's much easier to work with. I mean, I don't know, it, it, it's just, I prefer to use a milder acetone, you know, because a lot of the times I'm building several different things at a time. And uh, with the milder acetone, I don't have to babysit it as I'm uh, prepping the surfaces. Whereas when you're using 100% acetone, you better be very careful with that bad boy because you could, it's very easy to melt away or destroy details that you don't necessarily want to get rid of. While the covers are outside drying, I went outside and, and painted them, I went ahead and decided to treat the little trackball with the 100% acetone. Now, if you notice, this is what I was talking about. When you use the aggressive acetone, that plastic just melts right off. And then when you come to like blotch your brush on a paper towel or on, on the cardboard surface, for example, you see all of the plastic and pigment that is transferred? That's what I was talking about, man. This stuff's like 
pretty bad. Also, I'd like to add that you definitely want to wear some kind of respirator or protection or whatever. Don't be like the Asian ladies at the nail uh, the, the nail parlors, are they? Oh, we do your nails, we do it, we do it real pity. No, you definitely want to use respirators, even though I know uh, people at nail par parlors, you don't typically see them with any kind of respirator or protection. But uh, if you're gonna be using solvents, uh, especially acetone, man, and, and, and applying it to plastic or acrylic, or actually it really doesn't matter what kind of plastic you're applying to, you still wanna be on the safe side and wear uh, adequate protection. Texas weather is very bipolar, so I had to improvise and bring the parts inside to dry in front of a heater. Um, one minute it's nice and sunny outside, next thing you know they're dumping snow on you. Well, alright, that paint job came out pretty nice. Now I'm going to let this sit for a couple of days, give the paint some time to cure, and then I'm going to move on to another project in the meantime. And uh, once I'm done with that, I'm going to take a break and have myself a couple of bomb pops and watch a movie. So while I'm letting the pieces dry for the spaceship interior that I'm putting together, I'm moving on to some other pieces that are in the works right now. Just uh, doing some rough builds and base coats. They're not exactly completed yet. Still got quite a bit of detailing to do to them and whatnot, but um, you kind of get the idea. Like I usually always have several different things going all at once to keep myself busy, keep making me feel like I'm making some momentum on my projects that I'm trying to get out there. These are just some of the different designs that I've cobbled together from all these different pieces that I acquire and put into storage or whatever and then when I finally find uses for them I start to build my designs and uh, make my visions happen. You might see some of the imperfections that are still on these models. You know, again, they're still in progress, but I just kind of wanted to share some of my progress with you guys, just show you some of the different pieces I usually have going all at once. Because, of course, I'm a crazy man. Look what I found! I went through some of my bins, uh, looking through some of the extra parts that I have, and I felt that this would look great on this particular prop. This could very easily be like one of the buttons on the top. All I would really need to do is just uh, drill a hole and install it. And I think that'll look really freaking cool. Of course it won't actually do anything, um, but it'll actually sit there and look cool. All right, so now I'm putting everything back together the way it was originally constructed. And all I did in order to achieve that was go through the original stills that I had taken before the build and uh, that way I made sure that everything was reassembled the way it originally was. Now remember earlier when I was concerned about the rearrangement of the color of lights? Uh, well, I discovered that that was not even an issue because if you notice in the upper right hand corner there's like little registration marks. That way you can make sure that no matter how you arrange the colors in whatever sequence you prefer, the buttons will still engage the circuit board um, accordingly and everything should work just fine in theory. I went ahead and taped up the speaker wires and taped them to the circuit board so that way they're up and out of the way and then I put the switch back onto the circuit board and then I put back all of the um, battery terminals back into their respective places that way everything should work when I put it back together. Now remember that additional piece that I put in here you notice it's not connected to anything, I didn't wire it to anything, it's mainly just there for looks. Everything appears to be working just fine. See all the buttons light up, we no longer hear the annoying sound, sound effects that we really cannot use. See, all the lights pulse and flash with really cool patterns. You can even use the trackball still to make them go back and forth. We have like better control over them. Just a little added bonus there. To add extra detail and visual interest, I went ahead and spray painted a button with some silver paint. And I was gonna leave it like this because it does kind of look look a little cool. Kind of looks like a little bit of a like an kind of like LEDs sticking out of like a metal piece. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cover that up with one of these instead. 
so that would really be cool. And then just let me hit a button. Woohoo! Rock and roll!